Hello everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIII. Didn't say let's play that time. Although me saying that kind of defeats the purpose of me not saying it. Nonetheless, in the last of us we completed chapter 3 and defeated that giant flying dragonfly uh, bug thing. I don't actually know what its name is, I can't remember. And so we will begin with chapter 4. Now like the previous chapter complete, it's going to be a pretty lengthy cutscene. So without further ado, enjoy. <laughs> And before you forget about snow, and before that lengthy cutscene, we're going to have a little bit of a fist fight with these guys who took weapons to a fist fight, even though they should know how it ends. Bit of a surprise. Not well for them. Punch, punch, punch. Uh, don't worry about dying here. You are supposed to. You're not really meant to survive. There you go. Here we have our very first Eidolon battle. And yes, we will read this tutorial because uh, this actually explains Eidolons really well. This tutorial explains how to fight mighty beings known as Eidolons. I think that's a great way to say it, but I'm not too sure. Defeat them in combat and then their powers will be yours to command. But be warned, attacking alone will not overcome them. At the start of the battle against an Eidolon, a time limit is imposed on you via a doom counter. As you demonstrate your power to the Eidolon, its Gestalt gauge will slowly fill. Attack the Eidolon until this gauge is full and then press X to claim victory! Attack's not the only way to charge the gauge. Using the Libra technique may provide you with hints as to which additional abilities can be used. Defensive rolls are effective against the Shiva sisters. So, as it said, we'll use Libra. Let's see, does that teach us anything? There's Nyx. But no, we'll use the second one. Boop! There we go. So what do we do? Ah oh, yes, it doesn't actually say, does it? Nonetheless. Being defensive as hell really helps against these people. So keep that in mind. I don't know why I'm still hitting him. Right, let's go Sentinel on this. And Steel Guard! There you go, yeah! What are you gonna do? That's right, you can't do anything. Because I'm defending. Haha. -ha. Well, we'll go ahead and punch it again. There we go. 
So one hits you, the other one heals you, just to make sure you can't die. So the only thing to worry about is this little doom counter. Alright, so while it's charging, you want to get your sentinel ready. And just kind of, uh, steel guard. There you go, and then, she'll try and hit you. And it doesn't do anything. Switch back to Ravager, get that Gestalt Meter up again. Ugh, for some reason my ATP gauge didn't get reset. That's interesting. But yeah, you want to switch Sentinel whenever they do the little uh, ATB charge thing. That's your little warning part sign. I'm okay, so I'll just punch it in the face. I want to fill this bar up. Okay, yeah, I'll whack it a bunch. And now defend yourself. Yeah, seal guard. There you go, Nyx. Looks like you failed to hit me again. But yeah, for, as far as I know, let's get this one's actually really simple. Like, you're not gonna fail this one. Oh. Doing an early ATB charge, I see. Trying to throw me off. But that ain't gonna work, honey. G. Told ya. Oh. I wonder if I can actually get it up. See, the game just throws your ATB charges, so you really can't ever fail. Oop, steel guard. This should be it, actually. This should get it all done. There we go. And then press X, and you're done. I proved that I could take hits like a man. I now have my own back. Very nice. The target time for that was 28 minutes, by the way. <laughs> Don't think I was ever going to truly do that. But yeah, it's basically impossible to not 5 star these Eidolon battles just because you've got a time limit anyway. However, nonetheless, now the long cutscene will play on. So, guys, I will see you in a bit. We got the Shiva Idol as a spoil, which we actually won't be used for quite a while. And we gain the ATB gauge as well, which is really nice. Twin sisters. I gotta hand it to you for taking them down, but don't gloat just yet. Might come a time you wish you'd let them end it, and made things easy. Hmm. More of you, huh? He's a lessee. Take him. Back off. You want to keep breathing? Shut up and come quiet. <sighs> Bring her this way! Careful now! Come on! you, I'd worry about myself. One of them. 
on the status of the purge. Just moments ago, the Sanctum announced the successful conclusion of the purge, along with the safe arrival of the cocoon migrants to their new homes on Pulse. <laughs> yes, that is correct. There's no denying the enormity of the strain the purge placed on us all. But given the tens of millions of lives at stake, there truly was no alternative. Primarch Disley stood by the move, stressing the necessity of the relocation. When asked about the possibility of future purges, the Primarch remained non-committal, stating only that he would seek counsel with the Falci Eden and weigh all <sighs> options before making a decision. Yeah, that's right. If it makes the Sanctum look bad, it never even happened. In all the centuries since the War of Transgression, Cocoon has been spared pulse aggression and prospered for it. It is essential that we maintain this peace. That is the Sanctum's focus. We will continue employing every resource available to combat these threats to the harmony of our society. Meaning, we'll be running for the rest of our lives. Hey. Mm-hmm. Um, who is this guy? <sighs> I mean, what do they teach kids these days? He's Gallant Disley, the Sanctum Primarch. Murderer in Chief. According to our Insta Just poll, nearly 90% of the Coon citizens agree with the Sanctum's handling of the purge. 70% of respondents said they would also support additional purges were the need to arise. <sighs> Let's purge everybody. That'll fix it. Oh, hey. Points for perseverance. A sight of foul sea up close and personal. Cocoon's own light in the sky. Here we go again. Fly in. We'll lose him in there. Yes, I would like to save my progress game. Thank you. There we go. The Vile Peaks Cocoon Deadlands. Looks very dead. Mm hmm. Hey. Hey, wake 
Gotta keep you kids safe, right? These guys really shouldn't be a problem at this point in the game. Oh, they are now tanky. They've improved. Just could have made dying to it. Oh, you did. Half health, you. I'll just kill this one. There we go. No problem whatsoever. Easy five star. Bada bing, bada boom. Wicked fang. Very nice. Tracking us. I know that. I know that, but we aren't soldiers. We don't have your kind of stamina. You got enough to complain. Oh, that's. You... Forget it! I think. Um. I'd stick with her if I were you. Later then. Get going to where exactly? The whole of cocoons against us. No matter how far we run, there's no escape. That seath clock, it's still a ticking. There's still time. You give up too easy, old man. I'm not giving up. There's some things that you just can't change. A kid like you would not understand. Yeah, I'm a kid. I don't understand. Well, I guess we can be fugitives together. Oh, oh. you ready? Ready. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> hey. So once again, we've all split up from each other. Uh, there isn't any loot. There is our crashed vehicle, a little fire jet thing. Uh, and I think that's it for this area. I don't think there's any loot per se. No, there isn't. Okay. Let's go. I wonder if we'll be able to catch up to them. Let's find out. So it's just this way, right? Nothing bad's gonna. Oh. Oh no. End of the road. But at least it's not the end of the line. on fireworks, were you? <laughs> and you call yourself a soldier. Ah. Sorry, Lieutenant. <laughs> but I really don't think guard duty is my calling, sir. Well, lucky for you, your shift just ended. Back it up and go home. But, sir... Sidecom found something in the vestige nearby. They don't want the Guardian Corps here stepping on their toes. <laughs> I'm sure you heard about the accident at the Uriday Gorge Energy Plant. 
and how it has the Psycom lads in a tizzy. Yeah. More incident than accident. Something pulse-related. <laughs> You're taking tomorrow off? <sighs> sir, for my birthday, sir. My sister, she insisted on it. <laughs> 21, huh? Maybe it's a good time to send off that letter of recommendation for officer training. Lieutenant. You're past due for a promotion, Farron. Think of your sister, and your future, and, uh, keep your nose out of trouble. Out of Psycom business, you mean? Yeah. Nothing good will come of it. Nothing but grief. Whoa, look at that one! <laughs> You were, Lieutenant. Just you? For now, I guess. Should we wait? They'll catch up, eventually. Yep, just give them a few hours. Hope has access to the Synergist role. Synergists play a supporting role in combat using their abilities to enhance and strengthen themselves and their allies. As a Synergist, Hope can learn abilities to improve the party's defensive capabilities. Now, obviously, early game, you're not going to have that much stuff with Synergist. It's more of a late game class, but there are a few cool things you can get with it. Currently, Hope can use the Protect spell, which raises the target's resistance to physical damage. As he develops in the role of Synergist, Hope will also be able to learn Shell, which boosts magic resistance. With both of these spells at his disposal, Hope will be able to help the party endure a wide variety of attacks. When he's gained adequate CP, open the main menu with Y and start Crystallium to teach him Shell via Crystogenesis. And there you go, we've got Lightning and Hope. So we've got finally access to Mr. Squishy. Which also means we have some Crystarium points to spend. Now, 600 may not look like that much, but it's actually quite a bit for the Elegant. And obviously, we'll improve Lightning as a commando first, because that is our key role for the Elegant. Oh, definitely get Faults of him. I have no idea what it does, but it sounds cool. Slightly charge HP gauge upon attacking target afflicted of stat elements. Ah, so useless. <laughs> useless for now, anyway. Right. And Mr. Hope. So Hope obviously has a bit more because we never put CP into him. And that was for good reason. A medic, I would say, is his main role, so definitely improve him as a medic first. There we go. And I think I'm going to have him, just so I can get some spells, I'll improve his synergist capabilities. Uh, I'm actually not going to do that, am I? No. When do I get shell? Very soon, actually. Nice. Finally, I will sell some thingies. Uh, let's see. They don't actually look too bad, all things considered. I want to start off with Super Soldier, though. Just because that way he can buff. I'm probably not going to get that many five stars, but at least it won't get it. will guarantee me not getting a game over, which is what I want. Because, uh, for the most part, I don't really like Chapter 4 too much, because it, it drags on quite a bit. And there's a certain point in Chapter 4 where it's really annoying to fight. And I'll get to that bit when I say we get to that bit. That's it, I hope that's it. Cast both of them, and then we'll go back to Slash and Burn. So as long as he puts Protect on both of us, that's more than enough. Ideally, the main thing is he will focus the party member first to buffs, I believe. So, if you want, just have him buff on me and then change instantly. Obviously, Synergists can only buff the party saboteurs who um, nerf the enemy. There you go. Good job, Hope. So, so we're still going to get, yeah, as you can see, not as many five stars, which isn't a problem. I'm not farming for any loot yet, so don't worry. Five starring every battle in this game is not something you should look to do. You can, by all means, if you want. I don't recommend it. There's not really... All it improves is the drop rate, and it makes you feel better about yourself, that's, that's it. I'm going to fight all these at once, so let's see. Uh, I'm just going to have Hope cast on me this fight, I think, hopefully. That's it, there's a good boy. That's it, good job Hope. Yeah, so the pattern friends are pretty easy, but the fixed runs are a bit more durable. 
I'm going to use two Ravagers here just to try and get his Stagger Bar up. There we go. Good job, Hope. His little fist pump making him look so adorable. But we all know you're the weakest shit. <laughs> Literally two hits from them will put him into yellow health. That wind is very strong. Can you hear that? Oh my god. Ah, so they took stuff to repair Cocoon using stuff from here. Ah, interesting. And we're back to our good little friends again. Unfortunately, there's only two of us to help attack this time. Stay sharp. Yeah, I'm gonna really hope... I'm really hoping they focus me, because I've got the Protect buff on. Or as Hope doesn't. So, the good thing is they seem to all be focusing me. Uh oh. I'm getting you a medic. That's it. There you go. Good job, Hope. Woo! Like I said, don't care about five stars. I care about not getting a game over. Trying to get through the early game as quick as I can. But, now that I am pretty much done with uh, talking about this chapter, we can start speeding through. Oh no, Hope's gonna die. No, Hope, I need your Ravager skills. Whack it. Alright, Hope. I'm afraid you may die here. Nah, you won't. I saved you. But yeah, now that we've done a bit of it, we'll start speeding through some of these fights now. Just in the interest of time. So who are these? This is for enemies. Oh, this should be fun. I think I did that one pretty quick, pretty efficiently actually, which is quite nice. Oh, these guys are pretty tanky. Good thing I got the preemptive. So those enemies, if you don't stagger them, they can be really annoying. Like I'm, I'm talking seriously annoying. They are very strong. There's also another enemy like that, which we'll find in about in a few chapters, which are arguably more annoying. Can we get through this way, you think? You know where you're going, right? I've been here on missions before. Missions? Nothing to do with the Purge, though. The Purge is Psycom's baby. Our military is split into two arms. The Public Security and Intelligence Command, known as Psycom, and the Guardian Corps. I was Guardian Corps, Bodum Security Regiment. Wait, but I don't get it. If you're not Psycom, then why did you board the train? For Sarah. Join the end of the line! Attention, purge deportees. Follow instructions and stay in your lines. Personal belongings will be returned upon arrival. under Psycom direction. So direct me. Let me on. I want to be purged. Uh, only civs get purged. Sanctum staff and soldiers are exempt. 
Huh? Then I quit. Uh, line up. Excuse me. Hey, lady. What gives? I volunteered. Really? <laughs> you don't look ready to go quiet into that good night. You want quiet? You better take the next train. <laughs> well, now I really want to see what you're up to. I had to rescue Sarah before they transported the vestige to Pulse and out of my reach. My only chance to save her was to join the Purge. You're telling me you got on that train so you could save your sister? <laughs> That's crazy. I could never do something like that. It's not a question of can or can't. There are some things in life you just do. Easy for someone like you to say. <sighs> Lightning! She left me. One, two, three. Ah, we go. Hmm. <laughs> what are you up to? Hey. <laughs> oh, no, no. <clears throat> Wait up. Keep up with this girl. <laughs> nah. So I was gonna access the synergy role. Synergy just plays point role in combat. Wait, have I already read this? I already read this. Why is it telling me this again? Currently, Saz can use the faith spell, which raises the target's magic attribute, increasing the damage dealt by that target's spells. As he looks in the role, synergy Saz will be able to learn bravery, which boosts the target's strength. With both these spells at his disposal, Saz will be able to vastly improve the party's effectiveness against a variety of opponents. When he has gained adequate CP, open the main menu with Y and select Crystarium to teach him bravery via Crystogenesis. So, while Hope is more of a defensively based um, synergist, you'll find that Saz is more of an offensive based synergist, at least uh, at the beginning. So, that's the difference between those two, that's what the tutorial was trying to explain badly. Anyway, there's another story here, it's called Freeway Battles. At times you will encounter enemy groups engaged in battle with one another, while their attendants occupied. It becomes easier for you to initiate combat with a preemptive strike. Coming into contact with a member of either side will initiate a, combat, uh, initiate a battle against both. However, the enemies may not even notice your presence at first, continuing to fight one another instead. When this occurs, it is most effective to concentrate all of your attacks against the side you expect to have the most trouble defeating. Once you've defeated the first group of enemies, with help from their foes, you can turn and fight the already weakened second faction. Pick your targets poorly, and you may left left waging a long and bitter battle against overwhelming odds. Yes. Anyway, guys, we are going to end this episode here because there is a nice convenient save station, and I think it's the best time to do it. So there we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will hopefully see you in the next episode. And until next time, guys, a goodbye.